so what you guys did on your own last time and what we just practiced was just converting degree measure to radians and then uh, vice versa. So what you ended with, or where we um, are starting with, I guess I should say, is example C. It says to evaluate and give exact values. I know this looks kind of funky, but now that you know how to convert radians to degrees, what are we going to do here? Convert radians to degrees. Exactly. Convert the radian measure to degrees and then find the sine or whatever it is of that angle measure. So let's start off by converting pi over 3 to degrees. So I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi, which is... 60 degrees. Um, side note, listen carefully. Do you remember when we did the paper plates and you saw my radian measures on all of? Yeah. Make sure that you get all those on there because on your trig test, you'll have questions like this where you need to know those radian measures. So it'll just save you some time from having to convert if you already have them on your paper plate. Okay. So at some point, convert all those and get it on there for you. Yes, sine, cosine, tangent, yeah, sine, cosine, tangent, it doesn't matter whether it's radian measure or degree measure, the same angle is going to have the same sine, cosine, tangent value. So with that being said, sine of pi over 3 is the same as sine of 60 degrees, which is what? Which is radical 3 over 2, exactly. If we look at the second example, so cosine of 3 pi over 4, we can start off by converting 3 pi over 4 back to degree measure. So multiply by 180 over pi. Easiest way to do that, multiply straight across. So 3 times 180, divide that by 4. And what is that? 135. So cosine of 135 degrees is what? Negative radical 2 over 2. Negative radical 2 over 2. And then finally, for 4 pi over 3, I'm going to start off by just converting that to degree measure. So my pi's cancel, so 4 times 180 then divided by 3 is what? What is it? 240? So tangent of 4 pi over 3 is the same as tangent of 240. Uh, I have radical 3. Okay. So what I want you to think back to, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to think back to is geometry. That might be some bad memories for you. It might be some happy memories for you. Um, but what I want you to think about is in geometry, we found arc length by doing the following. We found arc length by taking the measure of the angle. over 360 degrees, and that equaled arc length over 2 pi r. So basically what that proportion did in geometry class was you found the proportion of the entire degrees of a circle, which is 360, and then you applied that proportion to the circumference of the circle, okay? Basically, arc length, guys, is just a part of the circumference of a circle, okay? If you look at this little graphic, so what this proportion, again, did, it took the measure of that angle, basically the pi piece of the 360 degrees, and then applied that same amount to the circumference of the circle. So you were finding the length of that portion of that arc of the circle. Okay, So that's what you did in geometry.
So now what we're going to do, we're going to take this same proportion, but we're going to kind of algebra 2 trig it a little bit. So what I mean by that is instead of saying the measure of the angle, if you look at our picture, what is the measure of our angle here? Theta. So we'll say theta and we want to do this in terms of radians. So in radians the entire measure of the circle is what? Two, two, in radians the entire circle is 2 pi. That equals, we are going to let the arc length be s, that variable s, and then over the 2 pi r. Basically, essentially, like, the same equation, just with, like, trying to, like... Yeah, it's the same exact proportion that you did in geometry class, but we're trigifying it. <laughs> I, that's not a word. But. All right, so what I want to do now is simplify this up a little bit. Let's simplify this up a little bit. What I would like to do is multiply both sides by 2 pi, and then that will cancel the 2 pi in both denominators. So then what that leaves us with is theta over 1 equals s over r. If then you cross multiply, that gives you s equals r theta. So that's the equation that we actually need? So that's the equation that you actually need. Wow. All right. If we look at some examples here. A central angle in a circle with a diameter of 30 meters measures pi. <laughs> so we have a central angle in a circle uh, that has a diameter of 30 meters. So let's draw our picture out. So here's my circle. I know that the diameter is 30 meters, which means that the radius is what? We know that the radius is 15. Okay. Um, the central angle has a measure of pi over 3 radians. So what that means is you have a central angle. The measure of that angle is pi over 3. If you're curious what pi over 3 is as a degree measure, it would be 60 degrees. All right. So when we are going to find the length of the arc intercepted by this angle, here's what you're actually looking for, just in case you weren't sure. We're looking for the length of that portion of the circle. So we are going to use our arc length equals r theta. We know our radius is 15. We know that the measure of our central angle is pi over 3. So the arc length, when we multiply, is 5 pi meters. Is that how you want it written? Yes. So not solve 